Welcome to the Homeschool Mama Self-Care Podcast. I'm Teresa Wiedrich from CapturingTheCharmLife.com. If you are a homeschool mama challenged by doubt, not sure you can do this homeschool thing. If you're a homeschool mama challenged by overwhelm, there are just too many things to do. Or if you are a homeschool mama unsure that the way you're showing up in your homeschool isn't the way you want to be showing up in your homeschool, then this is the podcast for you. I'm here to encourage you in your homeschool journey to help you strategize ways to turn your homeschool challenges into your homeschool charms. So welcome homeschool mama. Hey you, do you use that week between Christmas and New Year's to craft and evaluate and plan for your new homeschool year, the 2022 homeschool year? This is a practice that I've done for many years, ever since I discovered the book by Sarah Susanka, The Not-So-Big Life. That book had a huge impact on me, and it continues to, as it's always a book that I include in the Homeschool Mama book club. It's always a book that I refer to with every human being I ever come across. I even mention it to my husband again this week. It's a book that is really big, and I had the privilege of interviewing the author, a New York Times bestselling author, and more importantly, someone that is truly near and dear to my heart. I got to discover that we have common interests like gardening, specifically Claude Monet's garden, Giverny, which became the name of my bed and breakfast, but we had so many common connections and and just a sense of um, clarity on life this, or seeing life the same way. And we had such a great conversation that I have to mention it here. It's worth listening to by far my all-time favorite interview because I go back to it, re-listen and relearn things every time I listen to it. So that book, The Not-So-Big Life by Sarah Susanka. That book has a bunch of questions at the back of the book that you can use to assess your previous year. And there really isn't a time of the year that probably has less planned activities and less prescribed expectations than that one week between Christmas and New Year. It's the probably the most fun, unschooled part of the entire year for you and your kids. Well, during that time, Every morning, I light a candle, grab a cup of coffee, sit in front of the lit Christmas tree, and enjoy those questions and let myself just think about what has my last year been like, and then think about what I want to do for the next year, both in my homeschool and in my personal life. Once upon a time, I was a keeper of resolutions. Well, I was an attempted keeper of resolutions. I recently saw a meme that said something like, I am going to sign up to a gym to commit to exercising publicly at the same time every day for the next two weeks until I petition them to turn it into a wine bar. Curiously, in my part of the world right now, gyms are closed because of the whole Omicron thing. But the point is definitely made. I want to make a commitment to my resolutions for about the first two or three weeks of the year. And then it kind of fades off into the most comfortable avenue, the most familiar things that I'm used to, the the habits and the practices that I've become accustomed to long before this year began. So my resolutions, my resolving to exercise in a gym at the same time every day, or whatever other resolutions I put on my list, they don't usually bear out for me in follow through. Can I hear an amen? So I don't focus my new homeschool year planning and envisioning around what resolutions I want to put in place. Instead, I'm really taking stock of how my last year was and how I showed up in it, what my vision words are, So today we're going to talk about re-envisioning our homeschool year. But first, you're invited to this week's discussion on envisioning your new homeschool year. It's an intensive on envisioning your 2022 
homeschool year. Clarifying and evaluating it, not trying to control everything, but controlling instead how we show up in our homeschool and how that can benefit our children in showing up in their lives too. We're going to talk about what did work, what didn't work. We're going to consider who our kids actually are and if our homeschool is working for them. Consider who we actually are and whether our homeschool is working for us. And determine and craft a plan for the next semester. So bring your favorite New Year's drink because it's going to be a whole lot of fun. And I can guarantee you that I will be coming in my casual wear because I've been wearing that casual wear since December 24th. I will still be wearing my new yoga pants and hoodie. Thank you, Santa. Today's episode is sponsored by Mercentials. Kristen Mercer from Young Living Essential Oils had shared a gift with me. And one of the things she shared is Thieves Cleaner. Out of all the things she sent to me, this is a wonder to me. I had no idea that this Thieves Cleaner would actually be as effective as it is. In fact, I sampled it live on Instagram. I went live. I had never used this cleaner before. It was an honest attempt at saying, is this thing actually going to work? Or is this just like the cool thing everybody's talking about? Well, I am going to share with you my experience of using Thieves Cleaner the first time. You get to hear it in audio instead of watching it in video on Instagram. So take a listen. Okay, first I want to know what your favorite school subject is. Because mine really is science. Yeah, science. Okay, so I like to experiments. I like those experiments where we do bacterial swabs around the house. And today we're going to compare this regular bathroom cleaner that I have in my bathroom with this lovely bottle of Thieves. That was the one that Mercentials, Kristen Mercer from Mercentials sent me. And I gotta tell you, whatever is in this, there's like cloves and cinnamon and a variety of other things that really smells like Christmas. I have not tried it. I have filled it to what it told me to fill it to use the amount that I needed within this, I believe 500 milliliters water, and we're gonna see if it works. And I regret to tell you that I am going to let you see real bathroom bathtub grime. Every week I clean my bathtub because if you see this, that line right there, that's real. <laughs> this is not for your entertainment that I am giving you a view of my dirty bathroom grime, eek. Well, I'm gonna spray this here, that side, with pretty classic, uh, what is it called, scrubbing bubbles, uh, bathroom fighter, bathroom cleaner that I would find at Walmart or pretty much any other place that I purchase different cleaning products. And then the other side, I'm going to spray this Thieves water cleaner. Have I even tried to spray it yet? No, I have not. So the sprayer is not quite coming up. Hmm. Things I was not anticipating. Well, maybe just for right now until I figure out how to use the sprayer, I'm gonna splash it on to the edge. Just quickly put that. Yep, there it is. Fully, you can see that there isn't that kind of spray thing going on on the other side, but I'm letting it sit for a minute because I wanna see how well it cleans. And so I'm gonna use two different scrubs. One is for the side, the thieves, and that is the conventional cleaner, which I have been told, I have learned that actually, it's not all that favorable to use conventional cleaner because it's not good for you. Surprise. Well, you can see that it does come off rather easily, the grime from the conventional cleaner, and that is why it's easy to buy, it's easy to use, everybody wants to use it. I'm washing up the scrub. I'm gonna try the other side. Oh, wow, okay. I, it really, really is actually just as easy. And uh, I'm kind of a tough sell because for years I tried to go organic by using baking soda and vinegar. The reason I stopped is because I thought it was way too much work. Can I hear an amen? So it turns out, I'm gonna spray it down. 
absolute one of my favorite things in my bathroom is this handheld sprayer, like every mother's dream. Okay, so you can see that side, yep, it's clean. And that side, just as clean. But I'm telling you, it smells amazing. And it's all essential oils, it's all natural. Which I'm told is really useful for any kind of cleaning in the house. And that, that cleaner right there smells like Christmas, just in time for Christmas. And uh, it really was just as clean. Next, I'm gonna head over to the sink. So as you can guess, I will be purchasing more Thieves Cleaner. It smells so good. I do not feel like I'm doing something nasty to my lungs or possibly to my skin as I'm rubbing that conventional household cleaner into my sinks and into my bathtubs and trying to get away the grime. It actually feels really healthy. It feels like it's a good choice, like it might actually benefit me as I'm cleaning. If you want to learn more about Mercentials, you can check out Kristen's website. It's at www.mercentials.com. M-E-R-C-E-N-T-I-A-L-S. Recently, I heard from Murr Halls on the Apple Podcast Review. She said, Teresa is a pleasure to listen to and learn from as a new homeschooler. Her interviews go in interesting directions and always get me thinking. A must listen for anyone who wants to build their confidence as an authentic and simple homeschooling mom. And she said, I always nail it. Ooh, that's so fun to hear. Thank you, Mare. I love to hear that you specifically use the word confidence because that is something that I am about. I want you to have clarity, confidence, and vision in your homeschool and your homeschool mom life. Thank you so much for sharing that. I really appreciate that. It warms my heart. FYI, this is the last week to access the five-day 2022 Homeschool Mama Vision Challenge. So if you want a little encouragement coming into your inbox, this is a five-day Homeschool Mama Challenge to enable your vision clarity and purpose in your 2022 homeschool. The five strategies are to know your why, find your vision, know yourself, build on the charms, and accept the challenges. These five days of strategies will come direct to your email inbox to encourage you to show up on purpose in your homeschool, to align your actual daily activities with your homeschool vision, to tackle your real homeschool challenges, to address your real homeschool kids, and to acknowledge your homeschool mama, you, in your homeschool. As Maya Angelou says, the question is not how to survive, but how to thrive with compassion, passion, humor, and style. And I hope I'll do that for you in this five-day homeschool vision challenge. So what's been happening in your homeschool? If you'd like to share your thoughts on this episode or introduce yourself, I'd love to hear from you. So head over to the website www.capturingthecharmedlife.com and leave a voice message on the Speak Pipe app. It's on the show notes page or you can leave a comment on the post and I'll get back to you there too. I'd love to hear what's actually going on in your homeschool. This is what's been happening in my homeschool. It's that season between Christmas and New Year's. Actually, it's just after New Year's now and it's been, you know, kind of lazy the way it should be. That week between Christmas and New Year's and just a little bit past is just kind of quiet, exactly as I like it. It's kind of free-flowing. It's definitely the most unschooled week of the year, I'd say. It's an idea week because when we stop doing our typical routine and we stop expecting ourselves to follow through with what we've been doing, Sometimes that's when we're most likely to come up with the coolest ideas for a next year. I journal a lot in the mornings. There's quiet reading in front of the fire. My daughter, one of my girls, gave me a book by Ann Patchett. It's fiction, and I have not explored Ann Patchett before, and I just am loving it. It's so easy to fall into that book. I love a good book at Christmas. 
I'm definitely checking out all the Christmas gifts that the kids got and what they love and all the things that are interesting to them. My son has a whole bunch of things that aren't Lego this year. So weird not to be buying this kiddo Lego. Like he got a robot repair coding kit. Something that has been his just recent interest is a little bit of coding and it helps to develop concepts around coding. And of course, um, there's always a game. He asked for the game Guess Who? Now, I thought this game was probably a bit too young for him because he's 13 now. It's a pretty simple game. We haven't had that game. But he actually learned an algorithm for winning the game. And that's why he wanted it. Because this kiddo is competitive and logical and he likes to win. I bought Uno because I love that game. And we have played that game many years in a row for some reason cards go missing or someone loses the game so once again we've got another uno game i'm fast i like to win that game too mostly because i'm fast i do win that game we've looked at his osborne maps book his new guinness world records book he's got a harry potter book with a wand that can make some magical writing behind the page. I even tried to spend a little time watching Lord of the Rings with him. Okay, so if you love Lord of the Rings and Harry Potter and all those sort of fantasy-based genre movies or books, good on you. If you actually have resources that could be useful in learning for a 13-year-old boy, let me know because I'm trying to incorporate something like that in our next semester. But um, I just can't get behind them. I know they're amazing books and there's so much to learn from them, even on a meta level. I know that they're very well written books. And the movies are, as my brother says, epic. But I can't get past the first movie. I can't even get past half of the first movie. Just not my thing. I've tried. We've got to watch the kids share gifts, and I think that's one of my favorite things about Christmas now, that when the kids get a little older, they're not just excited about what they're getting, but they're excited about sharing the gift that they purchased or found or made for their family member and watching them be genuinely excited about sharing it with someone. That is, that's so fun to watch. I've got to do a lot of facial masks with the girls and watch sappy movies and sing songs at the piano and just hang out with their friends and with them. It's been a very lovely Christmas season. We've been hunkering down in this especially cold snap that we've been having over the last week, which means that we have a different kind of care for our three goats. And it means that the wood-burning hot tub that we got in the last couple months definitely needs more wood to heat it. And today, we're going to head out to do a little cross-country skiing, come back to enjoy the hot tub, and eat my very favorite meal of all time, leftovers. Yesterday was New Year's, and we maintained the tradition of creating a meal that came from my grandma's home. And it was something that reminds me of the past a Mennonite meal. It's veranica and farmer sausage with some cream gravy and I throw in some vegetables just to round it out. It reminds me that we celebrate the past and all the things that have gone before us help shape us and form us into who we are today. And I want to honor the people in the past. I want to honor the past. And I also want to look to the future, to plan for the future. And so we talk about our plans for the upcoming year. So that's what's been happening in my homeschool. From one homeschool mama to another, if you want to do this homeschool thing, I encourage you to take an assessment of how your last homeschool semester has gone and to get clear on why you're even doing this homeschool thing. You need to have clarity on why you're even here, like on the planet, why you're here, who you are, how you fit homeschooling into that purpose and how homeschooling works for you. Because why we do homeschooling influences how we homeschool and how we homeschool most definitely will affect how happy we are homeschooling. But who we are affects why we're homeschooling. Who we are affects how we're homeschooling. And also it gives us a strong sense of we are doing this, this life on purpose. To quote Dolly Parton, she said, 
find out who you are and do it on purpose. And I say that to you too, homeschool mom. You are a unique individual unlike anyone else on this planet. Your homeschool, therefore, will be a unique homeschool beyond anything that anyone has ever experienced on this planet. So find out who you are, do it on purpose, and you will do your homeschool on purpose too. So what's your experience in planning for the new year? On today's episode, we are going to talk about how we can assess, evaluate, and shape our upcoming homeschool year. Let's go. So here's what we're going to talk about in envisioning your 2022 homeschool. We're going to talk about your year in review. We're going to talk about your upcoming year. And we're going to talk about your upcoming homeschool year. The difference between your upcoming year and your upcoming homeschool year. It's the same time frame, except when I talk about your year, I'm talking about how you factor into your world your specific goals, your specific hopes and plans and dreams, and the you of your homeschool. And then we're going to talk about your actual homeschool year. This episode requires a journal and a pen if you want to get the most out of this discussion. So let's talk about your year in review. Here are some questions that I use from Sarah Susanka's book, The Not So Big Life, every year at about this time. I'm considering my past year, so I'm asking myself, how have I spent my time? What benefit has there been in using my time the way that I've spent it? What events have happened in my world? Big question this year, wouldn't you say? Okay, so let's talk about your year in review. The first things you think about when you think about this past year, what are they? What are the highlights of your last year? What are the lowlights of your last year? What are the external challenges that you've faced this last year? What are the things that you're working on in yourself? What did you learn in how you want to show up in your homeschool and in your life? What were you able to accomplish in that area? What were you able to accomplish in the internal work that you've done over the last year? What are the stories that you've told yourself? because we're always telling ourselves stories and interpreting what's going on around us. So what are the stories that you've told yourself? What are the conditioned patterns that you see in yourself? All of this self-exploration assumes that you are building in time on the regular to do mindful moments or to ask yourself, how are you feeling? What are you thinking? Why are you thinking what you're thinking? To get really familiar with your emotional atmosphere and get really familiar with the conditioned patterns that you do see in yourself. Okay, so what were your vision words for this past year? And how did your vision develop over the year? What are your personal goals? The ones that are not necessarily related to homeschooling, but are just your goals. You as a human being on this earth right now. What's your goals? How did homeschooling work for you this last year? How did the rhythm or the routine work for you? Have you focused on what you want? out of life? How focused were you on a scale from 1 to 10? How have you changed the world? And how did you use the resources, your time, and your skills in doing that, in changing the world? 
answer those questions, your year in review, and you'll get a strong sense of how you experienced the world and how you experienced life last year. So you can see that when I dig deep into journaling questions at this time of year, I'm not asking myself, what are my New Year's resolutions? What food do I not want to eat? How much exercise do I want to do? What are all the components of my morning routine and am I following them? I think all of those things are important. But I think the more important stuff is the internal work because it deeply influences whether we feel purposeful and whether we feel like we're becoming who we were meant to be. And also we're showing our kids how to do all of that. And it helps us to become a lot more clear on where we're going. Okay, so let's talk about your upcoming year. Keep that pen handy. We're going to continue to journal and to answer the questions that have value for how we're going to show up in our upcoming year. How do you want to feel in the upcoming year? Like if you could sit down and envision how you would actually be in your day to day, how would that feel? I think there's value in this. Because we are instinctively reacting to stuff that's going on around us all the time. And we've got those learned patterns, those conditioned patterns that we've learned from very early on. We don't really have to sign up for those anymore. Oh, it's a work to move away from those conditioned patterns. Sometimes a profoundly challenging work. And yet, we get to decide how we're going to think about things and engage things in our world. We don't get to control the circumstances around us. Right. Check. I agree with you. No, we can't. But we can decide how we're going to react to it. With practice, we'll even probably do it most of the time. So how do you want to feel in the upcoming year? What are the stories that you want to tell yourself in the upcoming year? So that's really just helping you get specific and expanding on that vision. What is it that you actually want to tell yourself? What are the conditioned patterns that you want to address in yourself in the upcoming year? The ones that keep showing up that don't feel good, that don't feel like they truly reflect who you really are. What are those conditioned patterns that you want to address? How do you want to use your resources or your time or your skills? What do you hope to learn? The beauty of this homeschool thing is that we can always find a way to include our interests and our curiosities into our homeschool if we put the effort into it. And that's often why our kids grow up loving the things that we loved because they really saw us loving that thing, impassioned by that thing. And even if they don't love exactly the same things that we love, because none of them love the same things and all of the things that we love, but they grasp onto the passion that we had and they say, that was really cool. I could see that was really cool because my mom or my dad thought that was really cool. So not only are we benefiting ourselves by building in learning into our homeschool for us, but we're actually showing our kids you can be impassioned by these learning things or these things that you're learning. And you can actually infuse their future with your passions too. How do you want to change the world? What is it that you want to do in this world? What are your vision words for this next year? You can use one or two or three different words to generally explain how you want to show up in your homeschool or how you want to be in your business or in your volunteer work or in your community, in your family, in your relationships. Choose a vision word for either all of these different areas or just one general vision word for your next year. What are your personal goals? 
do you have specific ones that are entirely outside the realm of homeschooling? Like I'll share one of my husband's because I'm really excited about it. It reflects who he is, who he's been since, I don't know, since he started reading. He loves politics. He loves history. He loves all that stuff. And it's a good thing because those are not my forte. He is going to run in the next federal election as a member of parliament. Dang, that is a huge personal goal. I'm so excited for him. I am as excited about why he wants to do this, but even more excited for him that he is seeing that this is the thing that he is impassioned by and he genuinely wants to change the world in a certain way. And he is going to do it because this is why he's here. So what are your personal goals for this year? What activities help to develop you? What activities help to nourish you? I don't say it glibly that we need to nurture the nurturer. It is clever. It rolls off my mouth very simply and easily. But the reality is that you need to nurture you if you're able to nurture your kids too. So what activities help you nourish you? What activities help you feel connected to others, like your family or your friends? What activities help you feel connected to other homeschool people? In the last couple years, there has been a significant challenge in that sometimes we aren't allowed to intermingle. And so creating community despite this can be a challenge. There are a lot of homeschool opportunities online, and I know it's not the same thing as playing at the park with your friends or having a homeschool co-op or whatever it is that you think of when you think of homeschool support, but we have a community. We even have a community right here between you and me. You can chit chat with me on the SpeakPipe app, or you can join an intensive or a homeschool mama book club, or chit chat with me on Instagram. And I know that there's a, you know, we have a homeschool mama support group on Facebook that we're building. There are many different ways through me and through many other homeschool avenues to create a community where you actually feel supported. How do you want to show up in your homeschool this next year? A big question. What does it look like? What words would describe how you want to show up in your homeschool? How do you want to do the routine that works for you, but do it even better? Could include a morning routine, or it could include a weekly routine of activities with friends or activities that help nourish an interest you have. But how can you make this homeschool routine work for you better? How do you want homeschool to work with who you actually are? How do you personalize your homeschool so that it doesn't just reflect your children, but it actually also reflects you? What are the activities that you can include in your routine that will help you do any or all of the above questions? So you can really do your upcoming year the way you want to. Okay, so we've talked about your year in review. We've talked about your upcoming homeschool year. Now let's chat about your homeschool, upcoming homeschool year, specifically more focused on your children. What is the first thing you think of when you think about this past homeschool year? For me, I think about homeschooling one child How totally weird that is for me. Having homeschooled four kids, I do indeed check English papers and a variety of different writing assignments from college or university, and I really relish that and enjoy that. I'm so glad that I can still participate in that as they get older. And my third daughter is in public high school. She's in her second year. My fourth child is my only child at home that I am homeschooling. And... That is weird. 
it is so different than anything that I've experienced before. But this is life, right? Things shift, they change, our homeschools change. So the first thing I think of when I think about this homeschool year is having just one child to homeschool and all the different ways we approach me doing my work alongside him learning and then when we come together and do the learning together or assessing or evaluating or discussing or all the stuff but it's just him and me. Record the highlights of your last year and record the lowlights too. What are the things that you need to engage with each of your kids to make your homeschool or family life work for them? This is when you start having individual discussions with each of them, no matter how old they are, because it sets a precedent that you are listening to them. It also sets a precedent that there's certain things that you're really paying attention to, and it helps them to pay attention as well. You can ask them, what did they like to learn? What did they learn? This is one of my favorite things ever is the beginning of the year, or is it the end of the year? No, it's the 100 day party. The 100 day party that we do where we sit down after 100 days of doing some formal homeschool and write down the things that we've learned in this last year, the 100 things that we've learned. Very interesting to see their focus because one child will focus mostly on history or one child will focus just on science related topics or they just all have their niches that they prefer learning and that really helps you to learn what they like to learn and what they actually remembered that they learned. How do they learn? The answer to this doesn't have to come in the form of their auditory learners or visual learners or verbal learners or, you know, kinesthetic learners. It can come in the form of they like to learn by sitting on their bed with the kitty cat beside them. Or they like to learn by doing things with other people. Or they don't like reading. Or they love reading and they love reading by themselves. Get into the habit of answering the question, what is it that they default to in a learning environment? How do they like to learn? Look at each of the subject areas that we've traditionally learned in school and see what you did together in homeschooling. You don't have to have a formal approach to this. You can be an unschooler and do this too. You can actually ask yourself, uh, what did I do with my kids this last week? Oh, we read together. Okay, you read together. What did you read? We read Swiss Family Robinson, which is actually a read aloud that my son and I have been doing. In that book, you will be introduced to an encyclopedia of animals and animals that really don't live on the same continent, but they definitely live in the same island on Swiss Family Robinson. You could cre create an animal encyclopedia just from that book alone. But that could be called science. What did you do? You did science. So look at each subject area to see what you did in your last homeschooling year and see where you might want to go in the upcoming homeschool year. You could loosely write the different subject areas and write in all the activities that you might want to include in each of those. You decide if it's valuable enough for you to write them out as different subject areas, but it does help you as a homeschool mom that probably has been conventionally educated to recognize that you really are doing all of the subjects. So you can take a breather and just enjoy being in the learning of whatever that subject or that, that activity is. What challenges do you anticipate in the upcoming year? Write that down. You could create a vision word for each of your kids this upcoming year. How you want to engage them or how you want to help them grow Create a vision word for each of your kids. What are your children's present goals? Ask them. How did homeschool work for each of them last year? This is an ask me question. Ask them. 
or note how they interacted with you throughout the day, or when they started to get really tired of doing some formal type learning, or when they started getting really bored. I'll talk about boredom another time, but I actually like when kids get bored. And my kids have heard me often enough that they don't come to me when they're bored. They just find something else to do. Because I don't tell them to go wash a a wall or or something like that. Um, I actually say, isn't it an opportunity for you to discover that you have gone deep into the other activity and now you no longer want to do those activities. And now you're having a break, a pause, until you discover something new. And now you can go down another path to go deep into another curiosity or interest. Yeah, I get philosophical. Are you surprised? Probably not. So how did the rhythm or the homeschool routine work for your kids? If they're old enough to answer, take what they have to say and actually implement it in your next homeschool semester. Whereas if they're too young to really explain, observe their behavior. Does it look like it's working for them? A couple of my kids would happily have started the homeschool days very early in their early homeschool years. I was too tired to do so. Or one of my kids would have gladly had me unschool her since the very beginning. She might not have said so out loud, but it was definitely clear to me that it wasn't working for her. Our very private school looking, classical homeschooling, Susan Wise Bauer, a well-trained mind approach. It looked clever to me to do this kind of homeschooling. In fact, it still does. And yet it doesn't always work for that specific child. It definitely didn't work for my first child. She just received it as controlling and too forced and not really considering what her needs were and her own level of creativity and the way that she engaged in general. It was really clear it wasn't working for her. There was a lot of pushback, which I did not listen to for a very long time until I read John Taylor Gatto and John Holt and finally decided to take her to the Starbucks one day and tell her, we are no longer homeschooling. You can do whatever you want in whatever way you want to learn. I am not going to force certain things on you anymore. Okay, truth be told, we went back to the other more original stuff in a much looser way, a much different approach, but we definitely loosened stuff up dramatically since that point and forever on. But it didn't work for my second child because my second child loved the routine and she loved producing things and knowing she had something to do today. And at 8.10, she knew she was going to do this. And at 9.20, she was going to do that. And she wrote it in a day timer as soon as she could manage to do that with colored pens. Every child is different. Every child is different. As soon as you figure out one, then you have another, unless you only have one. But how did those rhythms or routines work? for those kids. And the most important element, what is our relationship like with that specific child and how do we need to develop it? Because beyond all of the other things, literally everything that we've talked to about planning for your upcoming homeschool year, what your relationship is like is the most important element. And I would say stop what you're doing right now and ask yourself, what can you do to enable a healthier relationship. Which in my experience does not always fall on you to solve everything. It is just pay attention, observe, see what it is that you could do. Maybe there's something you could do differently. Maybe it is they need to grow in something and they actually need to engage something differently. So many possible discussion points that we could go on that path. But what is your relationship like? And how can you do something to improve it? Okay, so we have talked about your year in review, your upcoming year, and your upcoming homeschool year. I think this has been a lot. There's a lot of things to explore in everything that we've spoken to. As I was putting things together for the homeschool intensive on envisioning your 2022 homeschool, I had feedback from one homeschool mom. She said, I really don't want to think about what I did wrong 
or how I could do it differently. I just want to do it and keep going. And I get that, but that is a practice in us deciding to not be self-shaming, but to actually accept that we're human beings having a human experience and learning all sorts of things that we are growing. And we need to be able to look at ourselves and say, where are we really at? Where are our children really at? What do we really want out of this homeschool thing? So I most definitely do not want to encourage you to look at your failures and feel bad about them or to look at the ways you didn't show up in a way that would make you feel good or make your kids feel good. That's not the goal. The goal is so that we can show up on purpose in our homeschools. Okay, so I'm going to ask you to do something. After you have completed these journal questions or the ones that are most applicable and most important to you, I would like to hear what meant the most for you and how you're actually going to use some of these ideas in your real homeschools. So I'd love to hear from you. Please leave a voice message on the SpeakPipe app on the show notes to this episode which you can find on my website, Capturing the Charmed Life. Or if you don't feel comfortable sharing a voice message, you can always leave a comment on the show notes page. I'd love to hear what your ideas are for your upcoming homeschool year. So final thoughts. Consider the past. Plan for the future. Be present in the present. I look forward to hearing from you. Henry David Thoreau says, Above all, we cannot afford to not live in the present. She is blessed over all mortals who lose no moment of the passing life in remembering the past. Carpe diem, homeschool mamas. Welcome to your 2022 homeschools. You can find all sorts of free resources on my website, capturingthecharmedlife.com. All the show notes and links to this episode will be found at that website, If you can think of another homeschool parent who would be encouraged by these discussions, let them know too. Until next time, I hope you and your kids have a charmed week. Or if you're having one of those weeks, I hope you can reframe your challenges and turn them into your homeschool charms.